We are going live with Dr. Kim Bryant, and we are discussing fertility and pelvic therapy and what what we can do potentially in some to help. So let's get connected. Again, we are we are going live with Dr. Kim Bryant, and we are discussing fertility and pelvic therapy. So give us just a minute to get connected. I'm sending her the invitation now. So we are really excited to have you joining and really excited to talk about this. Hey, Kim. I can't hear you. You can't hear me. Uh -oh. oh, dear. I can hear you. Um, I can take out my speakers and see if that helps. Can you hear me now? Hello. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah it was my light. Okay. Then I'm going to plug my speakers back in. Because the audio is a little bit better with speakers. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Good. Okay. I'm Wonderful. trying to set up my light a little bit better. Here. I think it looks good. You look okay. good. Mm -hmm. I think okay. your lighting actually looks better than mine right now. So, oh, kudos. <laughs> <laughs> good deal. Well, thank you. I know we've been planning and talking about this for a while. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule. I know we've both been traveling a lot. And thankfully, my yeah. plane wasn't delayed yesterday with the hurricane. So, we made it and ready to rock and roll with this interview. I'm really, really excited about uh, having you share some of this information. So first off, just tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, where you practice and give a shout out for your clinic and what you're doing. And then we'll get into fertility and uh, pelvic therapy. Yeah. Um, so I've been um, practicing physical therapy for 10 years now uh, with specializing in pelvic health um, over the last two and a half, three years. Um, I have a practice here in the Phoenix area. Okay. I have one office in Phoenix, Arizona, and then one office in Tempe. Good. So, so you have two locations. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So I've got two two young boys. They're five and seven, and so it keeps <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, congratulations on having a private practice. If anybody is uh, out there listening in Phoenix or Tempe area, be sure to check you out. What is your uh, clinic's name? Is it Bryant Physical Therapy or Kim Bryant? It's, yep. Kim Bryant Physical Therapy. Okay. Good. All right. Yeah. Excellent. So now let's jump into fertility. So tell me a little bit about how you got interested in this area. Yeah, well, um, I started when I was treating patients for prolapse or any um, painful intercourse or incontinence, I always do a really uh, thorough job of abdominal wall work um, in addition to pelvic floor assessment. Mm -hmm. And I started having patients come back with, you know, my incontinence, my incontinence is getting better, but you know what, my, my period isn't as painful, or I'm having more regular cycles, you know, what, what might have been um, unrelenting pain for those first couple days where they were missing work, or like on the couch, they, they were saying, you know, what? I'm not having that now, and I'm was like, oh, <laughs> well, yeah, what's the correlation? Yeah, yeah, so that got me um, going to the, you know, to the books, looking um, up research um, and seeing what what sort of things are, are out there to support um, manual therapy. I'm like, what? I'm doing something. Yeah. What yeah. is it? Something yeah. is helping. And what's the connection? Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah. So then let's just jump into that. What role does pelvic therapy play in the treatment of infertility? Um, so the biggest thing is, I think that as physical therapists, I mean, we are always educating um, our patients. And so a big component of this is education. Um, so I, um, I talk to my, my patients about what is their menstrual cycle like? When did they start? Were they, do they have history of birth control? 
Um, do they have a regular cycle? Um, so a lot of them, when they're coming in with fertility issues, some of them already have an idea of what their cycle is like, but that's a good starting point. Um, and then I also ask general questions, major medical history, um, but also what is um, bowel and bladder like? Because um, our bowel health has a really strong correlation with hormonal health. Um, and so that's really important uh, to, to know and mm -hmm. to ask about. Mm -hmm. Good, good. So um, I, I want to read, because we're going to talk a little bit about the research. That's my next question. But in this, one of the research articles you sent, I want to read just a section of the conclusion, okay? And for anyone that's interested out there, I'm willing, and I know Dr. Kim is also willing to share these articles with you. So if you um, are trying to get pregnant and you're struggling, this may be a solution. It may not. This is not guaranteed. More research is needed, right? Right? So this is no guarantee that uh, everyone is going to, you know, be able to conceive by, by doing these techniques. But it's hope and it's a possibility. And for people that are trying and spending thousands and thousands of dollars, this might be a solution. So I'm going to read just this one little section here. The data suggests that this innovative site-specific protocol of manual soft tissue therapy facilitates fertility in women with a wide array of adhesion-related infertility and biomedical, biomechanical reproductive organ dysfunction. So what does that mean? <laughs> right? So somebody out there that isn't a healthcare professional, not a provider, what what? does pelvic therapy actually do to help with infertility? Yeah, so um, a lot of times, whether it, it can be an ovulation issue with, with um, that's impacting infertility, it can be a um, obstruction. Um, so if there has been history of endometriosis with um, surgical removal of the adhesions, um, polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS, um, even just um, having uh, painful periods, any sort of tension in and around the abdominal wall and pelvic cavity, your body, the fascia, can start to tighten up and get restricted. So it's not only on the, the organs itself, but that can be on the nerves. That can be on the blood supply. So that's where we're looking at you know, if you're starting, there was a question that you sent over that was about miscarriages. They've had three miscarriages. And my thing is, during that first, that first trimester, especially those early, early weeks when you're changing and the placenta is developing, you need a lot of blood flow. And so if there's any sort of a restriction on the blood flow, you might be able to get pregnant, but you might not be able to support that so um, doing soft tissue work that's not only going to um, release the tissues for blood flow but then optimizing that alignment if the sperm so if you have your your uterus and the, the fallopian tubes if that sperm has to go through all these little crooks and man you know right it's gonna have a more challenging time if we can make it more efficient um, then that can that can help so for anyone that may not know what fascia is, I like to describe it as kind of being like a spider web in your body. So it's, it's thin, right? And we have a good graphic um, on my page, but it's thin and it wraps around all the tissue and all the organs. And even a, a restriction in one area can cause dysfunction in another. So it's really, uh, um, I think, under assessed. And, and the importance of it can't be, can't be emphasized enough. So let's talk mm -hmm. a little bit about the research. What research is there out there to support manual therapy intervention for infertility? Yeah, there, one of the articles, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I sent over, I think it was the Wern article on treating female inf infertility. This one? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I, I can't really, it's so small and it's sideways, oh. so, oh, 
So, okay. Uh, so, so I, I have it in my database and my email, but okay. and I can attach it as well to my story today. So anyone that's listening after we finish this interview is going to be on YouTube probably by next week. But in my story, I will uh, either take screenshots or screen recording and attach some of that research. Yeah, so what they did is they um, had participants that went through a, a series of um, soft tissue techniques that were um, for viscera, um, vascular system. The one thing that I felt like was a little bit challenging with this article was that it was 20 hours within a five-day span. And for most people... <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. Um, so I... Um, I, I have not found someone that is wanting to do that, and I myself or is even not. able to. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. A provider yeah. or a patient on both sides. Yeah. So, um, but that was shown to help um, not only with if people had um, PCOS or history of history of endometriosis, um, but all of them were beneficial. Um, this this series in in helping um, these women get pregnant yeah. um, and so I think that it's really exciting um, just information like you said earlier there's there's room for a lot maybe more some, research <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. um, and, and more I don't know realistic timelines yeah. and treatment yeah um, but I mean I mean I'm having positive results <clears throat> excuse me even with just one hour or two hours a week Good, good. So you yeah. are seeing some patients with infertility and you're working on them and working on the adhesions and you're seeing some improvements. Yes, absolutely. Good. And it takes time, you know, I, yeah. and everyone, well, how, how long? And, and so I don't know, there's so many different factors involved. Um, yeah. And this is this one piece. My goal is to really optimize that environment and provide them with education Um that can help um, just improve their, their body's ability to, to conceive. Yeah. So in terms of uh, certain types of infertility that respond better than others, you would say some, like you were referencing, someone with endometriosis or uh, some other kinds of abdominal adhesions, potentially. Yeah. And, and fascial even, restrictions. Yeah. Even those with um, GI issues. Um, if they have, you know, history of Crohn's, IBS, all of those can create some some restrictions um, in and around the abdominal cavity and also the the pelvic cavity. One thing, um, what I one of the things that I usually do is a lot of diaphragm, rib, upper abdominal wall, posterior. Good. Um, release and I always go back to this diaphragm or di this diaphragm of my diagram. The diagram of my <laughs> good. I love visual aids. Yeah. And so if you rotate this, so now we're looking at the diaphragm Under. from underneath a little bit more. And you can see there's the inferior vena cava that's coming in, the descending aorta that has that is coming through this hole here, and even the esophagus is coming out to the side. So if you have an upper chest breather or someone that's really tight or has restrictions within that, that upper abdominal cavity in any ways, that can really create blood flow issues. So you might have abdominal distension or a lot of bloating during your cycle. Or you might have a lot of um, pain because maybe the blood can get in, but it can't come back out okay. through that the mm -hmm. vena cava. So, all, I mean, it can't. It, you have to look at this from that whole, whole the whole body. Holistic, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. you really do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, in terms of side effects, what side effects have you seen or heard about potentially, if any? Yeah, I haven't seen of any, at least with my patients, any major negative side effects. Um, I do uh, limit if they if they've had intercourse and they're in that fourteen day window um, after ovulation, we're in that waiting period um, of you know 
are they pregnant? Are they not? So I tend, yeah, I tend to kind of limit um, the the front abdominal wall or any sort of uh, visceral work at that point. Um, but there's definitely there's there's plenty of restrictions to go around. Yeah. So, yes, yes. Yeah. So, so in terms of an appointment, if someone was booking an appointment with you, they're going to come in. You're going to do a thorough assessment, and then if you're if you find some adhesions or restrictions, that you're doing a lot of intense one-on-one, -on -one, hands-on manual therapy. And so yes. manual therapy is basically where we put our hands on you and we are stretching and working that tissue, trying to increase the movement. Um, it, anything else you want to say about what they could expect during a manual therapy session? Yeah, um, I, I always think it's important to know that you don't, you don't have to hurt to be helpful. Um, there are some times where it can, you know, if there's certain restrictions, it can get a little pinchy, but I, I tend to say if it, if someone's making a face okay. of pain, yeah, yeah. then that's back off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I, I do spend, I would probably say 75% of my treatment session with, with hands-on work because I, I do feel that. I give you, you know, one or two things uh, uh, to do at home, you know, and it might be education, it might be um, a, a stretch or two, or improving your your bowel habits, um, or getting more vitamin D, it's something like that. Um, and so, I want to spend that time on things that you cannot do at home. Good, good. So then, that's a nice segue to my next question: Are there exercises or movements? that you recommend to uh, your patients? Well, of course yeah. there are. <laughs> what are they? <laughs> yeah, um, and I would say, and this goes for all of my, all of my patients practically, regardless whether what they're coming in for, is really having a good connection um, with their breath um, and pelvic floor. And then making sure they have good alignment. It, it, what is that foundation piece? Because um, as as we take our breath in, that diaphragm kind of comes down into that pelvic floor. So you get a little bit of downward mobility. So if you have that nice breath and that good connection, you really start to kind of pump or piston that whole abdominal pelvic cavity. So if you are, if you do have restrictions, if you've had um, a C-section, if you've had abdominal, uh, your gallbladder removed, anything like that, you really want to start to mobilize those tissues from the inside out. And that really helps to do that. So breath work um, and posture is probably one of my number one uh, pieces of homework or exercises I have people do. Um, there's another one that I, I call um, either mermaid legs or 90-90 with arm circles. I'm going to try and post, um, I'll post an example of that uh Good. today good and then, yeah I'll repost another it. one mm -hmm. okay and then there's another one um, from the postural uh, restoration Institute um, it's 90 90 hip lift um, and that really helps to build that connection with pelvic floor um, with breath down training that autonomic nervous system um, and just connecting Good. Uh, so I'm going to jump into some of the audience questions now that yeah. specifically relate to um, infertility. So how would they potentially know if they might have trouble getting pregnant? So are there any warning signs in advance that they, like um, from a prevention standpoint? Yeah, I would say if you have um, painful, painful cycles, um, and it's not, you know, oh, I'm a little sore here. This is, you know, like debilitating. Where, like, I can't yeah. function. Yeah. yeah. Um, so painful cycles, I would say irregular cycles. Um, so a normal cycle can be anywhere from two, uh, 22 to 35 days. So it's what is your, what is your normal? Okay. Um, I would say average is 28 days, but again, there's no, it's not cookie cutter. Um, so if you are skipping months, if you're having two periods in, in, in a month, 
Um, those are all signs that something um, something's not not could, healthy. Could, yeah, and could potentially impact you down the road. And then, of course, adhesions, right? So if they've yeah. had any kind of abdominal or pelvic surgeries, that mm -hmm. certainly could potentially cause some adhesions. Endometriosis, PCOS, what you were referring to before. Anything else that you would add to that list? Um, not at this. Yeah. Um, no, I think yeah. those are the, the big ones. And, and, yeah. Do yeah. you have any, I know you sent me a, a picture, kind of a stack of some of your books that you were, so do, uh, do you have any books that you would specifically recommend on this topic? All right, you're prepared. <laughs> <laughs> because I asked. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I got this one, How to Conceive Naturally um, and Have a Healthy Pregnancy. Okay. Unfortunately, when we're doing the lives, the books are reversed. So maybe if some of these you could post in your story and tag me, and I'll repost them, and then it'll be the right orientation. So you guys can uh, check that out. And then if you're watching this after the fact and you want information, you can uh, find us on Instagram, My Pelvic Floor Muscles, or Kim Bryant PT. Mm -hmm. So yep. we're always happy to share whatever information that we have. Another reference that I have, um, and these are just the, the books. I also have been um, taking some courses through the Integrative Women's Health mm -hmm. Institute. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, and then um, for, um, for a lot of the abdominal wall uh, visceral stuff, so fascial counter strain with Jones Institute, I've also taken their visceral course. Um, then there's uh, the Mayo Clinic Guide Fertility and Conception. Okay, good. And, and do, these, do these all discuss uh, manual therapy interventions or not necessarily? Not necessarily. Um, I, the manual, what I was able to find um, for the manual therapy were the research articles that I found that I sent to you. And even those were very far and few between. Right. More research um, is needed. But how powerful, yeah. like, to be able to actually show that it has helped some women, you know? Like, yeah, that's fabulous. Yeah. So why aren't we doing yeah. more research? So any researchers out there, or if you know anybody that researches, this would be a great topic to get some more studies yeah. on. Good. Okay. Uh, so in terms of interventions for infertility, so this is a question from a newer pelvic floor therapist. What would you say the overview is? So we have manual therapy, um, positional things, stretching, posture. I'm kind of not even letting you answer. You please answer. <laughs> You're fine. I mean, um, all the stuff that we're already talking to our patients about, you know, healthy um, bowels, you know, what does that look like? Um, because again, that's our body's, our, our menstrual cycles and bowel health is one of our body's way to get rid of excess hormones and things that we don't need. So um, inflammation, you know, are they getting enough rest at night? You know, are they limiting that blue light at least two hours before they're trying to go to bed? <laughs> you know I don't. <laughs> I know. Um, and just general yeah. exercise. Get get moving. If you can get moving and go outdoors, blood you flow. know, thirty. Yes, yes. Go so, um, movement and blood flow. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. Let's jump into foods a little bit. So I know you. This is a little bit off topic from specifically physical therapy, but we definitely, you know, foods play a huge impact in our bowel health and bladder health. So, what would you say in terms of foods and infertility? What have you found? Um, the things that I have found um, is that a big. It is very common. A huge part of our population is vitamin D deficient. Okay. Um, and vitamin D plays a really critical role in fertility health, not only for women, but also in males. It also helps with sperm okay. um, count um, and, and health. And sorry if I'm reading my notes. If there no, so I much want I you want to. Exactly. You see me yeah. keeping, I, I'm continuing to look down as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, Vitamin D deficiency has been associated with impaired follicular development and even just not ovulating at all. Um, so if you want, the best source is going to be from the sun or from food. 
uh, for, for, and it goes back and forth. You have, you know, people are like, oh no, the sun. Yeah, yeah, balance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is what's, what's recommended. What I was able to find was that 40% of your body needs to be exposed. Okay. Um, for, for light skinned, um, people, you need about 10 to 20 minutes. If you have a darker complexion, you need anywhere from 90 to 120 minutes. Okay. And would it still be the same 40% exposed if you had a darker yeah. complexion? Yep. Okay. Yep. And the goal, so to, to check on that, um, you want your body's um, D3 levels to be 50 to 90 uh, nanograms per milliliter. So it's a blood test that you can get to, okay. to check. Good. Um, so for food... Um, a fermented cod liver oil. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Where can I buy that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so from two different sources, um, I found that what was recommended, um, is the green pastures. Okay. Um, <clears throat> vitamin A. So not only does it have the vitamin D, but it also has vitamin A and the omega omega-3s okay so it's an all has all in one um or six oysters okay if you like oysters and you're near them then you can get it that way good yeah yeah all right now yeah. another question then are there things to avoid during pregnancy so yay we got pregnant now is there anything that we should stop doing or that you would you have any specific recommendations there um, I would make sure um, that you're um, looking at what's in your environment, you know, really being careful with plastics, um, maintaining a good blood flow. So you want to make sure that you're, you're moving and not staying stagnant. Um, there are things um, with, you want to avoid kitty litter, like that okay. has um, yeah. bad chemicals so, in it. Yes, yes. Um, but then in regards to, um, specifically fertility, there are four big ones. And I always reference that, that song, um, I think it's stink message in a bottle. Okay. You know, that song message in a bottle. So these yes, are four yes, things yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. that, that you usually find in bottles. So these are shampoos, lotions, sunscreens, makeups. So you want to avoid parabens. Okay. Okay. Um, SLS or sodium lauryl sulfates. Yep. Um, there's DEA or diethanolamine. Okay. I practiced these. We're hard. And propylene glycol. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did a good job. So, so yeah. Go ahead. Oh, these, these are four of the big components that mimic estrogen. They're called xenoestrogens. Okay. And so they can really disrupt your cycles and your normal hormonal regulation. Interesting. So are, yeah, yeah. So if you're having abnormal cycles or painful cycles, look at some of the things in your environment um, and see, you know, think about if, if it's a lotion or a soap that you're putting all over your skin. I mean, your, your skin is the, one of the largest organs, organs so it's right. absorbing. Yeah. Um, so I'm not saying go out and throw away everything, but if you can start to swap, start to swap things. So I, what things that I go for are everyone, uh, like everyone products. Okay. Or birth. Uh -huh, um, Dr. Myers, uh, those things you can easily find, um, but look for those four ingredients. It's really, um, once I started looking at those in my house, I was really amazed. They're all over, I would imagine. Could you repeat them one more time? I know we're getting close to the end, but it, yep. th just for anyone that may need to hear it again, one more time. Yep. So these are the four um, chemicals that can mimic estrogen and really wreak havoc on our hormonal um, status is parabens, uh, sodium lauryl sulfates, or SLS, DEA, which is diethanol, uh-oh, <laughs> diethanolamine, yes, okay. diethanolamine, okay, <laughs> and then propylene glycol. Okay, good. Very, very helpful information. So if somebody wanted a source to be able to read more, would they just Google? Um, 
What would, how, I mean, where should they go? Yeah, I think like, we want reputable information. Yeah, and it's really hard, you know, even the sources that I was able to find, there were some variances in, in what what was recommended. So I, I tried to find what was consistent in okay. these references, um, and that's what I reported. Okay, um, good information. So, so it, you know, yeah. I would imagine that more research is needed there as well. So mm -hmm. bottom line with all of this is, there's some potential um, for if, if you have endometriosis, if you've had abdominal surgeries, if you have potentially any fascial um, adhesions or, or significant restrictions in your pelvis or abdominal cavity, that may be impacting your fertility and pelvic therapy with emphasis on hands-on manual therapy to help release those adhesions and get everything moving like it should may help and we have some yeah. some nice research to support that so again if you want the articles let us know i'm going to post in my story but that's only up for 24 hours so if you're watching this on youtube later you won't have those articles however we're accessible so my pelvic floor muscles ken bryant pt she's in phoenix arizona and tempe arizona and people it you you just call or go online and make an appointment with her and she will do a great workup and do her best to help you live your best life and achieve your goals so yeah. anything you would like to add before we close for today no th i mean thank you so much for having me on and i'm always excited to to learn more i don't know it all but Yes. You know, I know that to be helpful. Yes, good. Well, thank you so much for sharing your information and for doing the research. And I look forward to collaborating more with you in the future. And by the way, she's a, she's a MyPFM ambassador, too. So we have a lot of exciting things happening. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. And you can find this interview on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is My Pelvic Floor Muscles No Spaces. So come find us over there. And this will be up probably by next week. Thanks again, Kim, for joining, and everybody have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.